tinted champagne I've never fit with the popular crowd and I've been told by some around me this world's fun and I missed out I don't spend my time chasing fortune and I've never walked the halls of fame I don't have a fancy education to put a tie
Somebody wants to do one we haven't done in a while. <laughs> I want to thank God for saving me and for everything he's done for me. And, you know, he never leaves us. He's always there for us. And even when we get slack on him, we can always come back. And he's always welcoming us back with open arms. And, you know, a, a lot of times I fall short as a Christian and and I wonder sometimes when I compare it to with like my children and they don't call and they never come to see me and and it makes me think of how God feels yeah. you know if we're not talking to him on a regular basis and we don't want to spend that time with him and how does he feel yeah. and uh, it makes me appreciate every second I get to spend with him, and and I know I'm nowhere near the servant I need to be. You know, sometimes I'll I'll go to him and I'll say, Lord, it's me again. I know I'm one of the worst servants you got, but I sure thank you for not giving up on me. Amen. Amen. We can try that. I'm sorry, we've got one that we've sung. It's been a while. hard to see when you get old anyway, much less the tears. Didn't know we had this many songs that we'd sung. I guess we better stick with what we know. Want to try it? We're going to try this one. Gee. Oh, of course. Then how does it feel to know you're a child of the King? Your heavenly Father owns everything. And how does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars up above? How does it feel to know you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night and know that it's real? Ain't it good to know how it feels? Do you know how it feels when your cold heart is melting and tears started flowing? The moment you felt it, do you know how it feels to know you've been changed and it seems your whole world has been rearranged? Do you know how it feels wherever you roam, you still get a feeling that you're not at home knowing heaven is real. Tell me, do you know how it feels? Then how does it feel to know you're a child of the King, your heavenly Father? He owns everything. And how does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars up above. How does it feel to know you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night and know that it's real? Ain't it good to know how it feels? Do you know how it feels Know something's missing and hear a still small voice that you just keep dismissing. Do you know how it feels to be troubled inside and to think just for you on the cross someone died? Do you know how it feels when he knocks to surrender? Have your sins washed away? Never to be remembered and know that it's real. Tell me, do you know how it feels? 
Then how does it feel to know you're a child of the King, your heavenly Father? He owns everything. And how does it feel to know you are loved by the one who created the stars up above? How does it feel to know you're all right when you lay your head on your pillow each night and know that it's real? Ain't it good to know how it feels? Well, it feels good, don't it? Amen. How does it feel to know that when you lay your head on your pillow at night that everything's all right? Feels good, don't it? Amen. Because he owns the land on both sides. You don't have to be afraid. Amen. I may not get this song right, but it's been on my heart. And I'm going to try to sing it tonight. If you boys can find me, just find me. I'm weary and I long for that peaceful land I'm nearing the end of day and he'll take me on over to that land so fair to that land of Hallelujah. Help me. Oh, no, I'm not afraid to cross that river my father owns. The land on both sides, he'll walk with me. I can see that beautiful shore. My journey's been rough and long. Thank you, Jesus. But He'll take me on over to that land so To that land of perfect day. You don't have to be afraid. Oh, no, I'm not afraid to cross that river. My father owns the land on both sides. the Lord. I'm glad you ain't got to be afraid. Amen. I don't want to die, but I'm not afraid. I don't know what it's going to take to get me down to the river, Homer. I don't. I mean, it may be just because you're saved don't mean you won't get cancer. It may be that that gets me down there, and I hope not. I hope, Brother Johnny, that I just get up today and find Leave today. I hope I don't have to go to the doctor and hear him say anything negative. 
I ain't got anything I got to fix up. If you got anything you need to fix up, I'd be getting it fixed up because you ain't got no guarantee that you got a long drawn out illness to get ready. Amen. You might, you might not ever make it out of this building. You may not see the sun go down. Amen. Before Wednesday, we may have a hearse parked under the on and out tire. They may be wheeling me or you in here. They ain't no guarantee of tomorrow. Amen. But there is a guarantee of an everlasting eternity where men and women's going to live forever somewhere. I'm glad you can know beyond a million doubts that you're ready to meet the Maker. Amen. If you don't know you're ready to go, hey, I'd be getting ready. Your heart may quit before the night fall. But if it does, are you ready to meet the maker hallelujah I'm not afraid to cross the river because my father owns the land on both sides of the river hallelujah I'm ready to get out of here are you ready to go I'm ready to go hallelujah I've got my preparations made Jesus signed my pardon this I truly know amen I'm ready to go thank God if he's ready to come I'm ready to go Hallelujah. Bless his name. You're writing your own obituary column. Amen. I've been in a lot of places. They want the preacher behind the casket to read the obituary column, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But don't expect me to preach into heaven. I can't do that. Amen. You're getting yourself ready wherever you want to go. That's the life that you live is is paving the road to where you want to live forever. How you been living? Well, I better, I better just change gears. Amen. I, I want to go to heaven. And I'm not one of these fellers that say, come to church, do whatever you want to, you can go. That's a broad path. Amen. But it's a narrow path. I heard what you said, Homer. Amen. You can't hide hatred in your heart and the Holy Ghost not shine light on it. Amen. You need to get that out there. You need to get this fixed. Amen. We want to go to heaven together. Amen. I told somebody today. Amen. You can't, you can't get along down here. You expect to go to heaven together. Amen. Let's get right. Let's get ready. Amen. Let's love one another. This thing, everybody ain't like I am. Amen. Hey, some people get on my nerves. And I get on people's nerves. But amen. But we're going to have to work these things out. Amen. And live like a family. Because I'm a going to a land where there ain't no big eyes and little U's. Hey, ain't no presidents and governors. There's a lamb and everybody else is the same. And if you're a going, you better get ready. If you don't like me here, you won't like me there. But let's get ready and get out of here. Amen. Let's live a life that would be pleasing to that lamb. Amen. He said, I'm a coming with a shout. You reckon what he's going to shout? I believe he's going to say, let's get out of here. Amen. I want to go. And if you ain't ready, you can't go. Don't try to hide anything in your life. It ain't hid. Get it out in the open and say, I'm sorry, Lord. And let's get out of here. And let's get ready and march on for God. Amen. Too much stuff trying to be hid. It's a shame. It's a shame. You can't hide it. Go to the doctor. We'll look at him and say, don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. We'll look at the car salesman, kick guitars, act like he's lying to us, and he probably is. Amen. Then we'll come to church and want everybody just to pat it on the back because, amen, we're just going to live in heaven forever. Hell's only forever. It really don't matter. Don't, don't beat on me like that. And I don't beat on people. But I want to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. I love him, don't y'all? If you have your Bibles, 1 Corinthians. Amen. 1 Corinthians. Amen. I should have went on probably and just give an altar call. But I'll try not to be before you very long. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. 1 Corinthians chapter number 7. I was reading the Bible or letting it read to me this morning. And uh, there's a phrase in these scriptures that the Lord will help us tonight. I'm going to try to pull from and glean from and try just to help us just a little while. Amen. Because little do you know that everybody in here is flesh. And your flesh is weak. Amen. I'm going to read several scriptures here. But uh, just to try to, uh, I, I, 
I don't know that I'll preach from the context of this scripture, but I'm going to pull, and I'm not going to bring it out of context, but I'm going to preach from just one little thought. And God help us just for a little bit. Verse number 25, Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that hath obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose, therefore, that this is good for the present distress, I say, that it is good for a man so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, lest such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. They that weep as though they wept not. They that rejoice as though they rejoice not. They that buy as though they possessed not. They that use this world as, as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Amen. But I would have you without carefulness, but that it, that, excuse me, he that is unmarried careth for the things that belongeth to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. She that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak of your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend unto the Lord without distraction. But if any man think he behaveth himself uncomely toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and needs so require, let him do what he will, he sinneth not, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will, and hath so discreet in his heart, he will keep his virgin, doeth well. So then, he that giveth her in marriage doeth well, but he that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. I know that's a lot of reading. And like I said, I felt like I needed to read all of that instead of just reading that one verse that I'm going to preach from. Amen. But I want to, I've been thinking about this for a while now uh, since I heard it this morning. And it's a very, amen. I think everybody in here, they, some people do better with it than others. And, uh, but I want to try to preach from verse number 37. The Bible said, Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will. Amen. I want to preach tonight if the Lord will help me and, and uh, having power over your own will. Now, we get ourselves in a lot of trouble uh, because we can't tell our own self no. Amen. There's a lot of people in a lot of different ways uh, that has a lot of problems in their body. Amen. Physically uh, because that they can't they ain't got power over their own will. Amen. There's a lot of people like myself uh, that could be a lot slimmer than we are. Amen. But it's hard to have power over your own will. It's easy, amen, to do it uh, when it feels good to the flesh. Now, don't uh, y'all come on, help me now uh, just for a little while. And uh, it's amazing that it is kind of tucked in here, amen, in amidst this marriage thing uh, in the Bible. And uh, we all know how lust a man has done in most all of our hearts and in most all of our minds. Amen. And I'm going to tell you tonight, lust is still alive and well. Amen. Around everybody in here. And it may not be the same kind of lust in everybody's heart that gets you. Amen. But the Bible said when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Amen. Sin has a nursery. Now, did you hear what I said? Sin has a nursery 
and there's babies born in all of our lives that call the result of lust and sin and things that's happened in our life that if you had it to do over again that you would not do it amen because of the of the repercussion of what you've had to face after that you've done it can I say tonight that just because you don't get that you get saved don't mean that you ain't going to have to pay for the things that you've done in sin amen if you if you stole off somebody amen I want to say when you get saved he puts something on the inside of you amen to want to take it back amen I said he puts something on the inside of you it ain't the fact to think oh well since I got saved oh that's gone amen I cheated Homer but I don't have to pay it back now I'm saved oh no amen it begins to let people around you know that you change when you start doing things the opposite of the way you used to do them hallelujah my daddy said the day I got saved the people I hated I loved them and didn't understand why it's because the love that God has put down on the inside of you I said it's the love that has been put down on the inside of you amen that makes you want to do that God put a will on the inside of you to do different and live right and do better amen I want to say tonight amen if you can surrender your whole life God can help you with whatever it is you've got going on in your life. These addictions that gets a hold of us. Amen. I can name them till daylight and I may not get yours but the reason you failed to it to start with is because you have no power over your own will. Amen. Hallelujah. You know why I've got this right here? No power over my own will. Amen. Honey buns cakes come on is anybody with me tonight shake your little pointy heads this way amen ain't no sense lying to me I can look at you amen things like that don't happen by fasting and praying amen amen we need to get up walk a mile this morning yeah I do I do but I'm hungry amen let's eat a snicker bar and drink a cup of coffee and a Mountain Dew instead amen there's a fellow I used to work with amen I don't mean to be funny but here's how we are he'd go in there he was like myself amen he was a little on the heavy side he'd get him a honey bun every day and then he'd get him a tight Mountain Dew I said buddy you're really a combating all that amen that you've got going on and we wonder why amen that we're weak in faith and we wonder why am I talking we wonder why amen that we fail under the things that's in our life I know peer pressure is a real deal amen you got to be careful of the people that you hang around I feel like preaching tonight you got to be careful I'm talking to somebody now when you get saved and born again no wonder he said come me out from among the world and be separate saith the Lord amen now it's in your own will how to sanctify yourself amen now it ain't easy to be made fun of can I get a witness now I don't like to see my children uh, be made fun of amen but you have to have power over your own will and to walk every day circumspectly before the Lord amen now I want to say right here amen if you're still looking at pornography you need to pray that God will get a hold of your heart and give you will amen power over your own will you say I can't quit going there amen don't blame me don't blame nobody but your own will you have no power over your own will amen no wonder we can't serve God without distraction our will has got us so clamped down we feed it with the things of the world Hollywood feeds our amen our weakness if we'll come close to God he can help us have power amen just say no amen just say no you don't have to go down there you don't have to smoke that you don't have to take that amen God can help us to be clean before God Amen. You don't have to listen to that. You don't have to watch that. You don't have to say that. We've got in such a rut that we don't know how to have victory. Amen. We don't know how to have victory in Jesus because we get hung up in our own will. Amen. The Bible said, He that committeth fornication dishonoreth his own body. Amen. We know we'll fail. So don't put yourself in a place to make yourself fall. 
Amen. Stay away from it. I said stay away from it. The table, the devil's got a table. Amen. And there's a place God said, Brandon, don't go. Amen. There's a place in your wheel that you know if you play with, you will fail to it. Amen. Ain't no sense telling me, amen, that you can stand all by yourself. If as a case, Jesus wouldn't have to come and die to rescue us from where we was. So that tells me everybody in here is flesh. The Bible said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I don't care how much you can bench press. Amen. Your flesh is weak. Oh, but hallelujah. When you get saved and born again and somebody else comes and gets on the inside of you and whenever he does, amen, he don't just say, now if you don't care, amen, I don't want the devil living here. Amen. I'll take weekends if you want. Amen. To do this through the week. Oh, no. When you get saved, you realize I'm tired of the devil living in me. How many ever remember? Everything the devil done to you. You remember when you come to the state to realize I'm tired of him living in my soul. I want Jesus to move in here. And when he did he changed it all. I said he changed it all. But the devil ain't forgot who you was but God can give you power over your own will. Hallelujah. Some of you used to be alcoholics. Ain't no wonder God We'll convict you not to eat in a place that don't that serves alcohol. Because he knows that's what got you. And he don't want you to get God again. That ain't good English, but that's we can all understand it. God don't want you to fall. And the Bible tells us if you do this, 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 if you abide in this, you shall never fall. There is a possibility of living right every single day. But you have to live circumspectly before God and say no to the world. When your friends call you, you're going to have to start saying no. It don't make no difference whose feelings you hurt. It's your soul, my friend. Amen. You need to have power over your own will to say no. Amen. You know why it's so hard to fast? You can't say no. John, I've fasted before. And I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just going to tell you how it is. I've made up in my mind this is what I'm going to do. We work for a company a billion, that owns built more farms. I'm talking about millions and billions of dollars. Years ago. He was the, the fellow that we was working for said, I, I'm the one that made the biggest, whatever, the bank, whatever. He said, I borrowed $10 million at one time and I had a plaque on my wall to prove it. We worked for him. We was working up on this hillside. I can remember, I, I couldn't take you back to the place, but I can remember the job. And of course, you get weak when you work construction and do what I do and you try to fast. Your body gets weak. Along about 11 o'clock, here this fellow pulls up. And you'll never guess what he did. No, no. No. He invited us out to lunch. Let me take you out to dinner. Now automatically, your mind starts arguing with itself. So whatever you're fasting for, you weigh it on this side. And you take one trip to the steakhouse and put it on this side. Yeah, but yeah, but he ain't never done this. And you can order what you want to, and it won't cost you anything. Let me weigh this out here. And the Lord just standing off in the corner, real quiet. Oh. <laughs> and the devil says, if you fast another time, amen, I'm going to kill your children. I'm sitting in the hospital bed with my girls. Amen. Sit there in them fever, running a fever. And the devil telling me, if you don't start eating, if you fast again, I'm going to kill your kids. Amen. But the Lord help me, Brother Homer, to have power over my own will. And amen, you can tell the devil, amen, he giveth life. Hey, I said, he giveth life. He can't take life. God gives life. Amen. And if whatever comes my way, let's go through the hand of approval through my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And God help us. 
when he asks you to do something, amen, it's when the devil's going to throw his junk your way, but you have power over your own mind, and God will come through with victory. Amen. These people in here tonight has got addictions in your pocket. Oh, it's going to get quiet now. Amen. How many people has got them out and throwed them in the ditch and said, I'm going to quit? I've seen them do it standing right out here. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You say you're going to get in trouble. I'm the pastor. Throw your shoes at me. It don't, well, it does make a difference. I don't want you getting mad at me, but the truth's the truth. Addictions is addictions. We'll preach on meth addicts because they don't get no taxes on it. But you can go down here to the store and buy all kinds of stuff. Can I help you, sir? I want three number fours, two number fives. Set the 12 pack of Budweiser up. And I want two packs of L&M's and $2 worth of gas. Daddy, Daddy, can I have a sucker? We can't afford a sucker. Put her back up. Let's park right here. Hallelujah. How can I get over it? You're going to have to take power. Amen. My daddy said, amen. Somebody asked him, said, would you please pray hard that this tastes bad to me? God said, no. Amen. Daddy said, no, I ain't going to pray that. God ain't going to make it taste bad. He didn't give it to you. He ain't going to take it away. You've got to have power over your own will to say, no, I don't want that in my body. Amen. I don't want it in my body. I want it to be the temple of the Holy Holy Ghost. I don't want somebody to think I've substituted what I had in the world for something I can buy at the store. Well, hallelujah. I want to have power over my own mind. You can go down there. You can be hooked on drugs. They'll give you something just as good as it is, but they get the revenue and you think you're okay. But you need to get power over your own will. Hallelujah. When Jesus saved the first one, there was no such thing as a hospital. There was no such thing, amen, as Red Bulls. There was no such thing as, what's them pills that everybody takes to fool your mind? Starts with a Z. Xanax. I'm having a bad day. You can't change a spiritual problem with man-made stuff. Jesus is enough. He's always been enough. He don't need anything that man has made. Amen. Conned it up in no chemistry lab somewhere. Amen. To fool with your mind and your heart ain't changed. But if you can make it up in your heart. Amen. To say God I need help and I want you to help me. He will help you by the way. Amen. He knows it's hard. I've been addicted to stuff and I know what it is. But when you say I need help he'll help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to go to the bar to be addicted. I don't know why I'm parked here. I didn't know I was going here, but I might as well just stay here. Hey, some of you can't stay away from the lottery tickets. You're addicted. You need help. You need help. You ain't got no power over your own will. I've seen people scratching them in the parking lot. Hallelujah. I've seen you at the store. Y'all looking at me funny. I know more about you than you think I do. You're going to have to get power over your own will. Amen. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. My people walk around. I love how y'all look at me funny. Amen. You'll flush it down the toilet tonight. Go back to the doctor this week. But I heard what you said and I hope you stuck to your promise. I've dealt with depression all my life, she said. She's been on medicine since she was how old? Fifteen. And I'm not going to get her to tell you how old she is now. How many ever prescriptions later? She decided she was going to try Jesus and let him be enough. Amen. And is he enough? 
is he enough? Is he enough? I mean, if he hung the stars, is he not enough to help you with what you're struggling with? Amen. I'm a talking to somebody tonight. Amen. How do I do it? First of all, you've got to look yourself in the mirror and say, no, no, no. And I feel that a boomeranging bag. I'm going to say it again. You've got to have to take authority over your own self. And don't blame me. Don't blame the doctor. Amen. They may have got you hooked, but Jesus can help you if you want help. Hallelujah. I remember when I had surgery on my knee. I might as well just preach. Benny's giving it to me. They give me a set of crutches and a bottle of pills. I went back to the house. And I want to say tonight, if you're hurting, you know if you're hurting or not. You know if you need something. Come on. Talk to me. Amen. If you need something, then I know you can take Tylenol, ibuprofen. But I come home and my knee was hurting. The doctor said, you need to do this and take one this time, this one. Time. Okay, I will. So I did. And I don't understand how you get addicted with doing this all the time. But you do. And before long, my mind said, it's time to take another one. And I'm going, but my knee ain't hurting. But my knee ain't hurting. Yeah, but you need one. And so I took one. I'm talking about within a week's time. And before long, the Holy Ghost said, you better get a hold of yourself. You better get a hold of yourself. Amen, you're going to go down a long road. You're going to go down a long road. Amen, you're going to go down a long road. Instead of going down there and knocking on the psychiatrist, why don't you bring it to the altar? Why don't you take it to God? I said, why don't... Why don't you take it to God? Amen. While I'm plowing, I might as well plow. Amen. If you'll give it to him, he can handle anything. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Amen. I had to get rid of them. I had to get rid of them quick. Brother Johnny can testify the same thing. Amen. He had his soldier op- shoulder operated on. He took one. One. Am I right? One. How many ever it was you took? Sitting there in his living room. He said, they was naked men coming through my living room. It's mine. Am I right, Johnny? Now, we're going to have to do something here. I mean, we don't want this in our living room. It wasn't in his living room. It was in his mind. You see, that's where your problem's at. So you're going to have to take power, authority over your own will. The hardest thing as a Christian is to say no. Now you would think in the world, I heard my wife tell a man one time, you want to be big and tough. You want to have a reputation. Be a Christian. You want to make a difference in the world. It ain't going to be by giving black eyes. It's going to be for standing up for a man that bled and died on a cross. Amen. And to tell the world he can change a life and a life of misery and turn it around and use them for a servant and a child of God. Amen. I'm not much, but I'm in the family. Amen. I know we all face trouble and trial, but he'll be there through it all. God help us. Amen. To have authority over our own will. Hallelujah. How many times while he begins to pray? You would not believe how many times I proclaimed in my mind I was going to start a fast sitting right here. And before morning ever come, it was out the window. You don't know how many times I've said I'm going to fast for you. And you. Your children. My children. But I just couldn't come to the grips with overcoming my own will. There's people in here tonight. Oh, and I feel it. I feel it. I never dreamed I was going this way. But I feel something that's got a hold of you. And you've tried to quit a million times. But you always somehow Keep going back. Whatever that it may be, whether it's to the counter, 
on the cell phone to the doctor. It don't matter. Till something got you bound. You want to be free. You say, preacher, you have no idea how hard it is. Yeah, I do. Because I've done it a few times and I know that you've got to take authority over your own will and say, Jesus, I need help. And will he help you? Yes, he will. And I'm going to tell you, you'll come out on the other side with a renewed mind and a fresh anointing, knowing that God can help you through anything. While we all stand to our feet. Preacher, I'll be honest. I need God to help me. Not to say no to somebody around me, but to take power over my own will. You're here tonight? Where you at? It's not a disgrace. For something in your life that you know is holding you back, tying you down. Preacher, you have no business preaching that to me. Can I tell you something? You keep going down a path of something that won't let you go. You always go to something a little stronger. Before long, you may just go too far. You may never get back. But God sent an old bald-headed preacher to tell you tonight, you can trust in this man. When he said he paid it all, he paid it all. And he can take it all. I'm not going to tell you it ain't going to be hard tomorrow. But I will tell you, if you ask him to help you, he'll give you power over your own will to say no. Who else needs to pray? I know there's more in the building. It's not a disgrace. Come on, friend. Now, if you enjoy being tied down by things in your life, just sit still. But you'll never have true victory. And you'll be held accountable for it, being now you know. Because it's got you bound. Does anybody want to be free? Lord, in Jesus' name, we come to you right now. <clears throat> Lord, help us. Help us to take authority over our own will. Oh, Jesus. God, help us to have power over our own self. Lord, in the name of Jesus, would you please help people in this building? Oh, they may not come to this altar, but they know right now their hearts pounding out of them. They need help. Would you please help them to make just a trip to this altar? Don't necessarily mean that it's going to happen tonight, but help them, God, to purpose it in their own heart to go home and say, I'm not doing this no more. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. So many times I failed. But there's been a few times that we can take power over our own will. God, help us to be a better soldier. We love you, Jesus. Move in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There is victory for everybody. But it's all left up to you how close you want to get to God. You can get as close as you want to. I went to the altar one time and there's this elder preacher there said, what are you here for, sir? I said, I want to get close to God. He said, me praying for you ain't going to help out a bit. It's your determination. It ain't me praying for you. It's up to you. And can I give you some good, solid advice? If you go back home tonight and you decide in your mind, I've seen people, Brother Johnny, come up and lay whatever it is on the altar and say, I'm not going to do this anymore. When you do that, you're held accountable to everybody that's looking. So when you can't hold up and say no to yourself, and by Wednesday you're doing it again, 
then when the church holds you accountable and you get discouraged and quit, let me tell you what to do. Telling me what you're going to do ain't going to change it. It's taking authority over your own self. Go home tonight and say, this addiction that I have, I'm not going to do it anymore. And when you get it behind you and grow through it, and then come back in here in a few days and say, let me tell you what Jesus helped me with. 